Do you think that Jack Eichel pulled the LeBron and just got his coach fired? I think he did. Yeah. But you know what? Once in a while, this might seem a little cold, Tim. There's nothing wrong with that. If you were more important than the coach, this is 2017, man. If you're more important than the GM, mm -hmm. speak up. And the kid did. I'm not crucifying you, Jack. Go on, man. You're going to be a great player in this league. If it's chaos around you, talk. I have no problem. This isn't 1968. And punch him like behind the bench and everyone shut up while the guy wears a hat. This is 2017. You don't like what's going on? You dictate terms. Good for you, Jack. I have. I, yes, he dictated it, terms, and I support it, him in that. It can't just be Jack Eichel. Otherwise, then your idea of the Pagulas jumps into my mind immediately. It's okay for him to voice his opinion, but the owner is supposed to know better than that. Like, the Pagulas here, they have to share some of the blame. No. Nope. Oh, yeah. He takes over the Buffalo Sabres in 2011. They've had four coaches in six years. The Bills, they bought less than three years ago, the Pagula family. Doug Marone, gong show to end it. Rex Ryan, gong show gong the GM show. didn't even know about to end it. Anthony Lynn, interim, he doesn't even want the job. Nope. He's gone to San Diego slash L.A. He's got a Chargers squad. See ya. And now Sean McDermott. Like, you have to place some of the blame. All I go back to are the Pittsburgh Steelers, one of the most stable franchises, and the Roonies. Uh, have have run it with a great deal of of uh, with a great deal of success class. and class, yeah. and they've had what three head coaches? <laughs> that to me is the Chuck example. Chuck Knoll, yeah, Bill Cowher, Mike Tomlin, right. run it. That to me is the standard. That's how you run a team, right? And sometimes consistency works. Earlier in the show, Sid and I were discussing whether or not Jack Eichel pulled the LeBron here and got his head coach fired, as some have suggested. What do you think? I think you're going to see Terry Pagula, when he meets with the media on Friday, come out and say very strongly that J uh, Jack Eichel did not have anything to do with this. And he has to protect his franchise player. Um, you know, J Jack Eichel is going to be the cornerstone of the Buffalo Sabres for a long time, and they have to protect him now because, you're right, he looks like, looks like a coach killer. Um, I think that story yesterday, it's fascinating to me, um, I thought Jack Eichel did a great job by, you know, you'll sometimes you'll hear in the summer a player will say, sorry, I'm not playing anymore, so I'm not talking. I thought it was very smart of Jack Eichel to come out and say, I'm sorry, I never said that. I think Jack Eichel and Dan Bilesma had their battles. Um, I do think that the Buffalo Sabres have investigated the possibility of bringing in David Quinn, the coach at Boston University, who yeah. was Jack Eichel's college coach, of being their next head coach. I think all of that is true. But I, I think now, and we're talking, the report here said that Jack Eichel was not going to sign an extension with the Buffalo Sabres if Dan Bilesman was still the head coach. The one thing I always ask myself is who benefits by that getting out? I'm not sure Jack, Jack Eichel benefits by that getting out because now he's getting destroyed today, yeah. guys. Yeah. And I wonder, and one of the stories making the rounds today is that Buffalo ownership looked at that and said, did it come out of our management group? And did they blame their management group for that story leaking out? And that's a question I'm curious to see if, if uh, Terry Pagula is going to address that tomorrow. Fridge, if you had first question at tomorrow's press conference, what do you ask Terry Pagula? Well, I, I probably know where you're going with this. And if I was a Buffalo reporter uh, about all the people that have been fired under his watch, like, I, I'm doing the math. The Buffalo newspapers have reported that they still owe Rex Ryan $16 million. Uh, I believe that they owe Dan Bilesma $9 million. And um, so you're looking at a severance of about $25 million plus, not counting Terry Murray, not counting, you know, Rob Ryan. Yeah. Um, and, not, and that doesn't include any potential offset language. So I think if I was a Buffalo reporter, uh, that's the question, you know, I would be asking first is, you know, your fans are, are lacking confidence right now. There's, I, I'm curious to know, there's always somebody who advises you in a search. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious if the NHL is going to be advising Terry Pagula on this particular search. Yeah, that's an interesting aspect to this. It feels like the Pagulas walked in back to Buffalo as the saviors, and I feel like tomorrow on Sportsnet 360, uh, he is going to get grilled as the guy who saved the Buffalo Bills and helped uh, the Buffalo Sabres.